it is with pleasure that I wish the class of 2020 and your guest a good afternoon. I am Dr. Tracy Whitaker, Associate Professor and Associate Dean for Academic and Student Advancement for the Howard University School of Social Work. I am very pleased to officially call to order and welcome you to the virtual awards and recognition ceremony for the Howard University School of Social Work Class of 2020 and the 152nd commencement exercises for Howard University. It is the tradition of the School of Social Work to recognize our graduates in this awards and recognition ceremony prior to the university's formal commencement convocation, which will be conducted virtually on Saturday, May 9th. During today's ceremony, we recognize the completion of the requirements for the degrees of Doctor of Philosophy and Master of Social Work. We also recognize the special achievements of our graduates. I'd like to start by telling you a little bit about the class of 2020. These 59 graduates represent the diversity that exists throughout the social work profession. They range in age from 23 to 45 years old. 80% of the class identifies as female and 14% identifies as male. Our graduates hail from five countries, including England, Ethiopia, Nigeria, Saudi Arabia, and the United States. They also represent 15 states, including California, Connecticut, Delaware, Illinois, Indiana, Louisiana, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, New York, North Carolina, Virginia, and Washington, DC. We welcome the families, friends, and colleagues of this dynamic group of graduates who are being celebrated today. The School of Social Work thanks you for your support and considers all of you an important part of our network of family and friends. It is my pleasure to welcome the Reverend Dr. Bernard Richardson, Dean of the Andrew Rankin Memorial Chapel to offer the convocation. Invocation, I'm sorry. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, in you we live, in you we move, and from you comes every good and wonderful gift. We give you thanks for the gift of Howard University School of Social Work. We thank you for the educators, the researchers, the administrators and practitioners she has produced. We give thanks for how they have fostered healing and change in individuals and institutions across our nation and the global community. We give thanks for the visionary leadership of Dean Crew and her outstanding faculty commitment to excellence and service. We give thanks for all who are receiving honors and awards today. May their achievements and accomplishments inspire others to rise above circumstance and to live out their hopes and dreams. We give thanks for the graduating class of 2020. The quality of their scholarship and their unyielding perseverance have earned them the right to be part of the great legacy of Howard University School of Social Work. They come not alone to this place of achievement. And so we thank you for their loved ones whose sacrifices, prayers, and resources have helped to make this day a reality. Oh God, we are mindful of the uniqueness of this moment. We celebrate in the midst of a pandemic. And so we ask, oh God, that you give to the members of the class of 2020 a boldness to believe that they have been called, they have been educated for such a time as this. Lead them now to the places of their callings. Lead them to help make our nation a better place. Lead them to make our global community what it never has been, but still must be. Bless now what our eyes will see, our ears will hear, our hearts will feel as we celebrate in this time together. 
And in your name we pray, amen. Thank you, Dean Richardson. Now, please welcome our alum, Mr. Robert Taylor Jr., who will provide us with a musical selection. Congratulations, class of 2020. Listen, you worked really hard to get to this point, and today we celebrate you. The world is in need of a change, and I like to think that social workers, we are the change. And so in today, I encourage you.
Thank you so much, Mr. Taylor, for that perfect, perfect and beautiful selection. It is now my pleasure to introduce the Dean of the School of Social Work, Dr. Sandra Edmonds Crew. Dr. Crew is Dean and Professor of Social Work at Howard University. Prior to joining the faculty, Dr. Crew served in executive level positions in the field of public and assisted housing. She has research, scholarship, and public advocacy in the areas of caregiving in the African American community, social isolation, and social work education, history, and leadership. Dr. Crew is passionate about giving back to the community and delivers numerous presentations to the community and faith-based organizations. She also holds numerous appointments on boards at local, state, and national levels, including the Maryland Affordable Trust. Dr. Crew is an NASW social work pioneer and provides leadership in social work education by serving as a member of the board of the National Association of Deans and Directors of Schools of Social Work. Under Dean Crew's leadership, the School of Social Work is ranked number 25 among all social work graduate programs by the U.S. News and World Report. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dean of the Howard University School of Social Work, Dr. Sandra Edmonds Crew. Good afternoon. It is my pleasure to welcome you and greet you at this time. We have had a rousing celebration already delivered by Mr. Robert Taylor. Thank you so much, Mr. Taylor, for those excellent remarks and the excellent singing. Graduates, today we celebrate a momentous occasion in your life. I join my faculty and alum in extending you congratulations on earning your Master of Social Work, Master of Social Work, Master of Divinity, Master of Social Work, Master of Public Health, Master of Social Work, Master of Business Administration, and the Doctor of Philosophy in Social Work. To the members of your family and network of friends, and acquaintances who've joined you today. Thank you for sharing this special time with our graduates. You have supported them in so many ways. If we were together in Crampton Auditorium on the campus of Howard University, I would have them stand, turn around, and give you a rousing applause. Now let's not, the, let, let's not let the physical distancing stop this time-honored tradition. From wherever you are, graduates, take a moment and celebrate all who have helped you on this priceless journey. Give them some applause, celebrate them, high five. You know what they did for you. Some provided financial support, and others consoled you when you thought faculty members were unreasonable. Yes, I know, you thought they were unreasonable at times. Some of you uh, helped your graduates through listening to their presentations that they were going to present in class. Others of you provided assistance and reassurance that everything was going to be all right with them and you assured them that they were just simply doing great. Some of you had to hear about their agency placements and how they wanted to be just like their field educator. Some of you had to hear about their high points and their low points. You celebrated when the graduates shared their experiences while traveling to Cape Town, South Africa and you provided the graduates a shoulder to lean upon for those who were not able to travel this year because of the coronavirus. Yes, you have been an instrumental part of their lives. 
You have, cons you have encouraged them. You have consoled them over the past six weeks as they ended their semester in a remote learning environment. But we're social workers. We adjust to change. Thank you for your love and your support. Now for our faculty, administrators, and staff, both at the School of Social Work and throughout the university. I thank you and appreciate the nurturing that you have given our graduates, both individually and collectively. You have gone above and beyond to make sure that they were Howard prepared and ever bold to battle wrong. The last six weeks, you have been their anchor. Not one of you complained about the sudden changes. You embraced the challenges and stayed the course of providing an education that was second to none. For the classes that I Zoom visited the last six weeks, I felt your energy and the dash of extra patience in supporting our students to the finish line. I thank you for that. Phrases like, you're on mute, turn on your video, can you hear me? All of those were a part of your ending experience. And of course, share your screen. They will ever be associated with your graduation. And yes, those virtual backgrounds are memorable. We will remember you through your virtual backgrounds. During your milestones and parting word celebration, there are some adjectives that your students use to describe you. Spectacular amazing, good listeners, consolers, teachers, talented, accomplished, profound, affirming, tough, fun, sharing, caring, knowledgeable, transformative, confidence builders, pushers of hope and faith, and finally they simply said you were dope. Graduates, Please join me in acknowledging your faculty, administrators, and staff of Howard University. Thank you for that. And again, I thank Dean Richardson for his beautiful invocation this morning. And to our esteemed graduates, you did it. I am so proud of the December graduates who are letting your light shine in agencies throughout the DMV and other parts of the nation. And to the MSW HU20 legends, you are the epitome of being Howard prepared and ever bold to battle wrong. In the words of a faculty member, you are unstoppable. You have demonstrated over the past two years that you can be the social justice warriors that you wrote about in your admissions essays. You remember those essays, right? You remember your declaration that this degree, this Howard social work degree, would prepare you to right the wrongs of society and take on the principles of the Black perspective. Wherever you are, repeat them after me. Affirmation, strengths, diversity, vivification, social justice, and internationalization. After the ceremony, make sure you let your friends and acquaintances know exactly what these principles stand for. And to our five PhD graduates, I am so very proud of you. You have embraced the work of a scholar and are now ready to carry the Howard brand to students across the globe. Each of you, Dr. Amber Davis, Dr. Sharon Sultana, Dr. Gary Jones, Dr. Shade Younger, and Dr. Katie Atkinson will advance the work of our founding dean, Dr. Annabelle Burns Lindsay and the faculty who have mentored you. And yes, I stopped by the office and picked up an affirmation card uh, from Dean Whitaker's office. This affirmation card is absolutely a reassurance that all is well. The card states, there is no blame. 
I release the need to blame anyone, including myself. We are all doing the best we can with the understanding, knowledge, and awareness we have. That is your affirmation for the moment. Now today, I want each of you to know the gratitude that I have for you achieving your Master of Social Work or your, ma your Master of Social Work or Doctor of Philosophy of Social Work. Drawing upon the theme of the HU20 legends, I have identified 20 reasons that I am grateful for your success. I am grateful because you will give precedence to challenging social injustices. You will insist on the dignity and worth of all persons. You will value the importance of human relationships. You will practice with integrity and intentionality. You will provide competent practice across populations. You will respect your colleagues in practice. You will demonstrate high ethical principles in practice. You will promote the general welfare of society at local and global levels. You will engage in social and political action that improves social conditions. And yes, you will offer compassionate, voluntary service to the community. Now, I am sure, graduates, that you recognize these from the Code of Ethics of the National Association of Black Social Workers and the National Association of Social Workers. The next 10 reasons that I am grateful for you are based on the principles of the Black perspective. You will embrace the Howard University Social Work Black perspective to improve society given promise to African Americans and historically oppressed groups. You will affirm hope where there is despair. You will strengthen the social welfare systems to improve outcomes. You will use your skills to work with and authentically value diverse individuals and communities. Yes, you will viv vivify the social determinants that impact the well being of African Americans and other marginalized groups in society. You will be the bold one in the room and raise social justice and human rights concerns, even when they are tr being trying to slip, sweat, when even when they're being swept under the rug. You will be the bold one in the room. You will recognize that ours is a global existence and the internationalization of practice is critical. And you will never, never provide simplistic explanations to complicated issues such as the pandemic that we are currently experiencing. You will never, never, never forget that you entered the profession based based on the sacrifices of those who paved the way for your accomplishments. And finally, number 20, I am grateful that I have had the privilege to serve as your dean and learn from you and be a part of this amazing accomplishment that we celebrate today. Graduates, I thank you for being Howard Prepared Social Workers and Scholars who will make a difference. We need you today. Remember your title is in your next, remember whatever your title is in your next position, you are a social worker and you should proclaim that you are a social worker proudly. Never let them forget. As Dean Richardson states, that we're a little pushy about our title. We earned it. You deserve it. We are a social worker. We are social workers, and you should be proud and bold about being a social worker. From the day you stepped on campus, your mission and major were aligned. I know President Frederick will enjoy knowing this. We are always aligned with our major in mission and social work. Now more than ever, you will be called upon to use your voice and continue to show the world what it means to be Howard Prepared. For 85 years, this social work program has had graduates 
who have continued the legacy set forth by our founding dean, Dr. Annabelle Burns Lindsay. When the question is raised, why your class, HU20, experienced disruptions in traditions, I will say, because you are the chosen ones to support those who are infected and affected by uh, the coronavirus uh, pandemic. And you are the chosen ones to address the disparities that have altered and claimed so many lives. You are the chosen ones. Carrying forth the theme of the 20s, I am reminded that this was to be the year that Harriet Tubman was to appear on the $20 bill. Now, you know, graduates, you know that I have this special relationship with Harriet Tubman. So I had to mention it at your special celebration. So I ask that you would bring me one of those first $20 Harriet Tubman bills. I was looking forward to receiving them. But despite the delay, despite the delay in the bill coming out, your, with your vote and advocacy, it will happen. With your vote, and advocacy, we will see Har Harriet Tubman on that $20 bill. And I will gladly receive that bill when you receive it. Now, don't forget that because I need that $20 bill for the next generation of Howard prepared social workers. In the meantime, I will accept the $20 bills that you already have, but we will continue to work to receive that $20 bill that has our Shiro Harriet Tubman on it. So as we begin to think about advocacy, please remember to advocate for the Dorothy Height and Whitney Young Social Work Reinvestment Act that, was, uh, that is authored by uh, Barbara Lee, our representative. And of course, you will be the ones who will also someday, I'm looking for one of your members to also to be in Congress, like Congresswoman Barbara Lee, or be in a state Senate, like our speaker today. I know that you will be one of those. In closing, I share this quote from General Harriet Tubman, my Shiro, the great social justice warrior. Every great dream begins with a dreamer. Always remember, you have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars and change the world. Graduates, General Tubman was talking about you. Thank you. I now have the privilege of welcoming comments from President Wayne A. I. Frederick and Provost uh, Anthony Wuta. Before they deliver those remarks, I would like to simply give a short uh, bio of each of them. President Wayne A. I. Frederick, MD, MBA. As the 17th president, Dr. Frederick's goal is to enhance the Howard University legacy ensure that the university maximizes its impact and that its students receive a well-rounded educational experience. Dr. Frederick continues to operate and deliver lectures. His medical research seeks to narrow the disparity in all cancer care outcomes, and I might add in all health outcomes. A distinguished researcher and surgeon, Dr. Frederick has also received various awards honoring his scholarship and service, including a congressional citation from, for distinguished service presented by the Honorable Barbara Lee, a social worker. Dr. Wayne A. I. Frederick is a true son of Howard University, a proud and loyal exemplar of its motto, truth and service. Dr. Anthony K. Wuta, Provost and Chief Academic Officer. Anthony K. Wuta, is a registered pharmacist and is the provost of Howard University. He is my provost. 
He, re he previously served in various roles at the university, including as Dean of the College of Pharmacy and Assistant Provost for International Programs. Dr. Wuta has also served as Director of the Center for Minority Health Services Research and the Center for Excellence at Howard University. Provost Wuta has been a champion of our social work dual degree programs and recognizes the value of international of interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary education. It is my privilege to serve under the leadership of President Wayne A.I. Frederick and Provost Anthony K. Wuta. Congratulations to the 2020 graduates of the Howard University School of Social Work. I honor you today in recognition of this incredible milestone. You have demonstrated that you can rise to the challenge, adapt to your surroundings, and persevere. Today, you've earned your degree, but more importantly, you've received an education that would allow you to go out and change the world around you. Please know that the thoughts and best wishes of the entire Howard University community are with you and your families. Congratulations. I'm Dr. Anthony Wuta, and I currently serve as the Provost and Chief Academic Officer of Howard University. I want to first greet the parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts, and significant others who have supported the graduates. The degrees that they will be receiving belong as much to you as it does to them. To the School of Social Work Class of 2020, congratulations on this significant milestone and accomplishment in your life. I know that these are uncertain times and many of you may be wondering what comes next and where your life will be leading. I want to share with you this scripture from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verses 11 through 13. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. I wish you all of the best as you continue along your life's journey. God has great things planned for you, as I know that there is greatness within each of you. I'm confident that you will accomplish great things. May God bless you as you continue on this next phase in your journey. Thank you, Dean Crew, President Frederick, and Provost Wuta. We will now have greetings from Ms. Trulisa Newberry, President of the Howard University School of Social Work Student Council Association. Hello. Hello and good afternoon, President Frederick, Provost Wuta, Dean Crew. Senator Griffith and other distinguished guests, faculty, staff, and my fellow students. I also wanna welcome all of the family and friends who are joining us from all over the world to celebrate this monumental occasion. I bring warm welcomes on behalf of the Howard University School of Social Work Student Council Association. It has been my honor and my privilege to serve as the executive president for the 2019 to 2020 academic year. First, I must give all glory to God, who is the head of my life, and I could not be at this moment without him directing my path and my steps. I also wanna recognize my mother, uh, Felisa Newberry, my brother, Kevin, my grandma, my cousin, Thomas, and all those who have loved me through this degree. I wanna take a moment to acknowledge my esteemed colleagues who also dedicated their time and contributions to leadership throughout our journey. It is an African proverb that says, if you wanna go fast, go alone. If you wanna go far, go together. And we made it to today because we stood by each other and it is with honor that I was able to serve with you all. Those who passed the baton 
include Brianna Sylvia Moe, Secretary and Membership Coordinator, Renee Raman Smith, Treasurer, Huswa Senator Nara Nathan, who I might add will be one of the future US Senators that Dean Cruz spoke of. Also Huswa Senator Simone Solomon, Amaris Evans, our GSA representative, Sierra Ford, our alumni events chair, and last but certainly not least, I.O. Port. I.O. Port served as our vice president and social media guru. She played a pivotal role in the transformation of our communication platforms and continues to be the sensei of the administration and also of my life. And I wanna thank you for being my partner through it all and most importantly, my friend. Six months ago, as I addressed the December 2019 graduates, I imagined this day to be so much different. We all anticipated being surrounded by one another, our families, our friends, our faculty and professors, taking in the final moments of our graduate career on the yard, continuing Howard University legacy and traditions. In a blink of an eye, everything changed. The entire world faces a pandemic that has altered our way of life substantially. Many were forced to shelter in place. Some of us forced to relocate. Some are unable to see or talk to those that we love. Many are, are battling in illnesses and challenges and all of us have lost far beyond words can express. COVID-19 is our generation's wake up call. A wake up call forcing us to realize what is important and what is not. A wake up call for us to radically show up for ourselves and for each other. A wake up call that demonstrates how we are all connected. And I'm reminded by the Ubuntu, which means humanity is tied to yours. I am because we are. We are in this moment together and I am extremely emotional uh, because we do not know what the future may hold. So I believe it is my purpose to bring this final call of action with joy and minimal tears, but more importantly, intentionality. Class of 2020, we are called at this very moment in history as Howard prepared social workers. We have gone through this journey together, through the good and the bad, the ups, and the downs, we have accomplished great achievements and endured significant tribulations. We are game changers. The game changers that nobody else could have told us about, and I mean that wholeheartedly. Who would have thought that we would begin our careers during a time when the entire globe needs some sort of support? We have already received the call to the front lines, supporting communities far and wide with mental health needs, dispatched into the healthcare settings, in jails, prisons, detention centers, serving families, children, migrants, refugees, undocumented folks, people facing homelessness, veterans, and all those existing at the margins of our society. We are called to bring them to the center and to hold space for their voices to be heard. We will be the foundation of solution building that will define the next chapter of our society. What we do as Howard Prepare Social Workers will allow the next generation to live in a world that is much kinder and freer than we could have ever imagined. It is on us. The Howard University School of Social Work Class of 2020 to change the game, period. <laughs> because we are second to none. So today, as we sit in our homes, our hopefully our safe spaces, some of us alone, some of us with friends, some of us with partners, children, family, or even pets, no matter what, you must know that we earn today. You earn today. We worked hard to relish in our success. Remind yourself when moments of uncertainty rise up that you have everything inside of you. I am beyond proud to call you all my colleagues, but I can finally say that you all have become a part of my family. Congratulations, congratulations, and congratulations. Go forth. Go forth, y'all. Get catchy. And be fearless. Just make sure you keep a little distance. I love you, and I'll see y'all on the front line. Thank you.
Thank you, Ms. Newberry. That was wonderful. I know your colleagues appreciated your words of encouragement, hope, and power in that call to action. It is now my pleasure to acknowledge my colleagues, the members of the distinguished faculty of the Howard University School of Social Work and the staff. The members of our faculty are, can we, Dr. Solomon Abu Bader, Professor Karen Allen, Professor Marietta Andrew Sachs, Dr. Tricia Bent Goodley, Dr. Annie Globe Boone, Dr. Cheryl Brissett Chapman, Professor Stephen Broyles, Professor, Professor Clinique Marshall Chapman, Dr. Aisha Bonner Kozad, Dr. Sandra Edmonds Crew, Dr. Robert Cosby Jr., Dr. Janine Cross, Dr. Janice Davis, Dr. Janice Barry Edwards, Professor Peter Fitz, Dr. Ruby Gordine, Dr. Cynthia Harris, Professor Dawn Hobdy, Dr. Laura House, Dr. Altaf Hussein, Professor Fallon Jones, Dr. Karen Kolobowski, Dr. Samuel Little, Dr. Mayrong Liu, Dr. Andridia Mapson, Professor Chester Marshall, Dr. Shalita Snyder Martin, Professor Jean McRae, Dr. Karen Miller, Dr. Cheryl Nichols Neverson, Dr. Shirley Newton Guest, Professor Shanina Robertson, Professor Anthea Seymour, Dr. Jacqueline Smith, Dr. Kudor Snell, Dr. Heather Stowe, Dr. Tracy Whitaker, Dr. Christine Wiley, and Professor Rachel Bradley Williams. We also want to particularly acknowledge Dr. Tricia Bent Goodley on her retirement after 22 years of service to the School of Social Work and leadership in the social work profession. This year, we also say farewell to Dr. Samuel Little and Dr. Cynthia Harris, both of whom have served as members of our faculty for many years. I'd also like to take a moment to acknowledge our administrative staff. Ms. Sandra Gammons, Mr. Edward Griggs, Ms. Sarah Jackson, Ms. Tierra Johnson, Ms. Siobhan Mentor, and Ms. Tiffany Pearson. Dean Crew. Thank you, Dean Whitaker. Uh, I am so fortunate to have such a wonderful faculty, and I so much appreciate uh, all that you have done, as I said earlier. Uh, you are the uh, anchor of our school, and because of you, uh, we are able to have these phenomenal graduates, such as Ms. Trulisa Newberry, who really gave us a wonderful, wonderful address today. I think the last time I said to you is that I wanted to go before you when they were speaking. And you notice I managed that today, True. I really got in before you today. So thank you so much. It is now my uh, privilege to introduce our keynote speaker, the Honorable Melody G. Griffith. Melody G. Griffith. Uh, I am just so honored to introduce her to you. Melanie Griffith currently represents the 25th district in the Maryland State Senate, my district, my senator. In 2020, Senator Griffith became the first African-American woman elected as president pro tem for the Maryland uh, State Senate. That just deserves an applause in and of itself. In this role, Griffith served as the leader of the Senate chamber in the absence of Senate President Bill Ferguson. In addition to serving as President Pro Tem, Senator Griffith also serves as the chair of the Budget and Taxation Committee's Subcommittee on Health and Human Services. She is a valued member of the Maryland State 
Maryland Senate senior leadership team, providing input and guidance on major social policy initiatives. She served as a member of the Maryland House of De Delegates from 1999 to 2015. She has visited our campus and spoken with our students. Senator Griffith has been a licensed clinical social worker and has spent most of the career working to positively impact public health. So you see how timely her presentation is today. She holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Human Services and Psychology from Montana State University, Billings, formerly Eastern Montana College, and a Master of Social Work degree from Howard University in Washington, DC. She is indeed Howard prepared. She is currently serves as the deputy of the Prince George's Arts and Humanities Council as well. Senator Griffith, we thank you for the work that you're doing in the state of Maryland. And it's my honor to introduce you to some and present you to others uh, as you present to our 2020 graduates. Uh, a rousing speech, because I'm gonna claim it to be rousing already. Thank you. I present Senator Griffith. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. I do want to give honor to God, uh, who's the source of my strength and the strength of my life. I am so delighted to be invited to join you all this afternoon and to share a few words with the Howard University School of Social Work class of 2020. I want to acknowledge uh, that it is an honor to share even a virtual podium with our distinguished president who has led with grace and distinction during times of challenge. I want to acknowledge President Frederick and the administration of the university. I want to say to Dr. Dr. Whitaker and the other committed faculty at the School of Social Work, I know how much you give of your time and talents of yourself to just challenge and draw out the best in each of the students. And we thank you so much for all that you do, not just on behalf of the university, but on behalf of our community to all of the friends and supporters who joined uh, to celebrate our awardees today. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of this important presentation. And I do have to give a special thank you to my constituent, Dr. Crew, who has been a friend and a supporter and encouraged me through uh, some challenging times. And I'll share a little bit about that in a minute. Um, I also want to acknowledge, just because I'm afraid that I'll forget, I have two phenomenal sons who've been incredibly supportive and who've heard my remarks more times than they probably care to. And uh, a couple of dear friends, my, my roommate while I was at Howard, Deborah, who's teaching now um, at VCU, she's the associate dean there in the School of Nursing, and my goddaughter, Amber, who helped contribute to my remarks. So. I wanna acknowledge them right up front because as you all know, in this social work world, we don't do anything by ourselves. Now, um, I wanted to say that, and Dr. Cruz said it, I'm a proud alumna of the Howard University School of Social Work. And so to all of the faculty, staff, alumni, grandparents, parents, siblings, nieces, nephews, aunts and uncles, cousins, friends, partners, supporters, we're all here to congratulate you. And when I, when I had my opportunity to receive my congratulations as an MSW student from Howard School of Social Work, that was over 30 years ago in 1987. And at that time, we'd never heard of iPhones and laptops and droids. There was no social media, there were no tablets. And so it really is a blessing that we have this, this method of communicating with one another today and that we have the opportunity to share with you and celebrate your accomplishments today. While throughout our lives, each of us celebrate certain milestones and achievements, I believe your, your graduation, you, the class of 2020 in May, will be one that none of us will ever forget. It's not likely that you'll ever forget the months, weeks, and days that led to your graduation. And it's during and in spite of this pandemic. And I do have to pause for a moment and acknowledge that some have been personally and directly impacted by COVID-19. 
we understand that some, some aspects of your experience today will not be what you dreamed of, what you hoped for, what you planned for, and what you worked toward, but we applaud you. And we are so proud because we understand that, guess what? Your journey began long before there was a COVID-19. We know that you met obstacles along the way and you persisted. And so as social worker graduates, whether you're receiving an MSW or a dual degree, a PhD, as has been stated, your skills are needed now more than ever before. You probably couldn't have imagined when you started your degree program that you would be leading during a time like this. And these uncertain times where fear are, is raging throughout the land, your compassion and empathy, the desire to help and heal are what will carry our country and the world forward. And that's why we're going to continue to celebrate you. When I was a student at Howard University, Dr. Wilkins, I had no idea what a president pro tem or a state senator was. I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know what skills would contribute to their success. And while I didn't know it at the time, the incredible foundation provided for me by the Howard University School of Social Work faculty and through my, my practicum placements allowed me to practice and master skills like problem solving, understanding systems, human behavior, relationship building, case management, and advocacy. And those skills continue to serve me well. My professional career path has changed over the years, and I believe that it exemplifies some of the versatile skill sets that each of you have. Even though I've worked as a hospital social worker in discharge planning, HIV AIDS program coordinator for the National Basketball Players Association, a child welfare worker, a licensed behavioral health provider, a research project coordinator, a workshop facilitator, I was a volunteer support group leader, vice president of a federally qualified health center, and now I'm deputy director of the Prince George's County Arts and Humanities Council. But people most often ask me how I ended up in elected office. And when I look back, Dr. Crew, over the path of my running for office, it all started shortly after my graduation from Howard University. I was a young social worker living in an older established community, and my house was broken into four times in two years. There were drug tra transactions around the community and crime was at an all time high in our neighborhood. At the same time, I had a, an eight year old bonus child and he was kind of popular. We had a basketball hoop in our driveway. And so a lot of the neighborhood youngsters would come into our driveway and play basketball and sit and talk with my son. And so I, I pulled out some, some folding chairs. And so to those of you that have done a little research, you know that I didn't go through the IRB process, but I was holding what would be one of many focus groups. So I brought those youngsters together and had them sit in a circle and I asked them to explain to me Help me understand why so many youngsters are involved selling drugs in our community. And so one of the, the young people said, well, um, I think they're doing it so they can buy clothes and tennis shoes. And I said, huh, okay, so they want clothes and shoes. And I grew up in Montana, so I really didn't understand how attached some youngsters are to clothes and shoes at the time. And then another student said, well, maybe they wanna buy food. They wanna to go to carry out or they wanna get some fast food. And I said, okay, so they wanna get clothes and shoes. And to a social worker, these are basic needs. And so I'm hearing that these youngsters are engaged in drug transactions to get their basic needs met. And uh, as, I, as I talked to them a little further, I said, I can't imagine that these folks would get up every morning and go to work to get money the only reason many people get up every day and go to work is to buy a house. And one young man said to me, Miss Griffith, if we could get you enough money, would you buy us a house? And I said, a house? What, do you, what would you do with a house? And he said, we'd like to have a place to play pool, watch videos. At the time, we watched videos with VHS. But he wanted a rec center. And I said to him, I said, you want a rec center and, and young people shouldn't have to sell drugs to, to get that. And so I was telling some coworkers at work and that's where I first learned about a group called the New Suitland Recreation Council. I got involved in the community and learned about the Civic Association 
I was raised on an Air Force base, so I'd never been introduced to community activism and civic engagement. And so at the first civic association meeting that I attended, there were elected officials there. I never talked to an elected official, but being Howard Bold and social work strong, I approached that elected official and I said, help me understand how some communities have wonderful recreational facilities and the community that I live in that has a lot of young families with young kids and apartments that don't have any place for them to recreate, why don't we have a rec center? And he said, because y'all don't vote. And it was at that time I, I, I realized how little I knew about the community I was living in, started a journey to, that began at a library researching Maryland politics, and really became a voter registration volunteer, engaging and advocating people to be involved and to fight for things on their own behalf. And being joined by others in the community we were able to start a neighborhood watch and register more voters than had been seen in that community. And then people started asking me who to vote for. So over the years, I was encouraged to run. And I don't mind sharing that I didn't win my first election. When I first ran in 1994 for the House of Delegates, I wasn't successful. And quite honestly, I didn't win my second election. But in 1998, I was elected to the House of Delegates where I served for 16 years and had the opportunity to impact resources for health and human services, education, minority businesses, job creation for nonprofits to really begin to have an impact. Well, for those of you that know my story, you know that that's not where it ended in 1990, I'm sorry, 2014, I ran for the Senate of Maryland and again, I wasn't successful, but I'm so grateful that in 2018, the constituents of the 25th district in Prince George's County gave me a vote of confidence and allowed me to go to the Senate of Maryland to serve as their senator. Less than a year later, this January in 2020, I was sworn in, as Dean Crew mentioned, as the president pro tem of the Maryland Senate. And it's, it's a wonderful honor to serve, but it's also an awesome responsibility. And I so need social workers like you to help me to better serve the community. Now, after going through the elected process, I had the opportunity to learn more about the needs of the community. And so in this last session, I had the opportunity to, opportunity to introduce and pass legislation that benefited veterans, um, some loan assistance repayment program for students, uh, retirement bills that ha help our state employees, and all of these issues were made stronger because of my social work background. The degrees that you work so hard for and sacrificed for will offer you the versatility and skills to do things that today you might not even imagine. Some of you will be on the front line helping others to adjust. Some of you will help others survive the new normal by assisting with services, behavioral and spiritual help. Some of you may make cutting edge discoveries or find innovative solutions to co common problems within the realm of caring for others. And still others will go on to generate evidence that will impact and improve the lives of individuals, families and communities and influence policy at multiple levels. Still others will serve as a voice for those impacted by an ever-changing and often volatile economy and contribute to job creation, advocating for, to make the lives better for others. What I do know is COVID-19 has been a sobering opportunity for us to reflect on what matters. So let's think about what we can take away from this pandemic. I challenge each of you to discover what you will undertake to impart positivity and good in the world with your newly earned degrees in social work. And I know some of you have already found your work assignments and are already on the way. Your compassion and generosity will contribute to a better future for all of us. Remember, social workers are essential workers now and always. Our ability to effectively listen, problem solve, and work with multiple disciplines is a valuable asset to our country's recovery. Now, I'm gonna share a little secret with you. I often think about and journal about what conversation I would have with my 24-year-old self 
if I could go back to the time when I left the campus of Howard University. So I'm gonna share with you what that conversation would look like. I would say to my old self, you will meet some amazing, talented and incredible friends who will be incredibly supportive. But there are haters. Not everyone will celebrate when you win or comfort you when you lose. And please make sure that you're not someone else's hater. The second thing I would say is give yourself permission to make mistakes. You don't have and shouldn't expect to have all of the answers. Allow yourself to learn and grow with every new experience, knowing that there are probably gonna be some bumps along the way. The third thing that I would say to 24-year-old Melanie, then G, is practice self-care. For me, that means surrounding myself with music of all genres. You know, when I came to Howard University, I came from Montana, as Dr. Crew mentioned, and so I listened to different music, and I, I had never heard go-go until I came to Howard University's campus, but now you can't make me sit down. But when I came to Howard's campus, I, I realized that I was raised by a PK, and for those of you that don't know, that means my mother was a preacher's kid, and she played the piano. My father, who's still living in Montana, has two brothers who are bishops, and he grew up playing the guitar in church. My children, my siblings, my nieces and nephews, actually most of my nuclear and extended family, are either engaged in gospel, jazz, R&B, folk, rock, and yes, even funk music, and a little go-go, instrumental and vocals. And during times when resource, resources may be limited or spirits may be down, we find music to be very uplifting. And so I wanna share that when I came to Howard's campus, uh, the first classroom I walked into was the, the classroom of Dr. Gladys Walton Hall. And what a lot of people didn't know at the time is I was 22 years old and she was the first teacher that I'd had that looked like me. And I was so warmly embraced by my fellow students and I hope that that's been your experience as well. I love that you all represent so many different countries, so many different states and so many different communities. We are all different, but each of us brings something unique to this situation. So I was sharing that, that I mentioned several of the jobs that I have earlier, but I left one job off the list. I used to be a karaoke jockey. I had a karaoke business and I brought people together to sing and do karaoke. And so I thought that I would close by sharing with you one of the songs that I remember from doing karaoke. It's a song called I Hope You Dance by Leanne Womack. And in that song, she says, I hope you never lose your sense of wonder. You get your fill to eat, but always keep that hunger. May you never take one single breath for granted. God forbid love ever leaves you empty handed. I hope you feel, still feel small when you stand beside the ocean. Whenever one door closes, I hope one more opens. Promise me that you'll give faith a fighting chance. And when you get the choice to sit it out or dance, I hope you dance. Graduating class of 2020 from Howard University School of Social Work, I hope you dance and dance and dance. God bless you and thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much, uh, Senator. As I said, that she would give a rousing uh, celebratory speech. And I hope you dance as well. <laughs> it's so important that we find the joy. We find the joy in us if we are going to be great social workers because we are encouraging and influencing others. And we will always remember that day when you were on campus really with the karaoke. So we will certainly look forward to you having a special meeting with the Graduates 2020 when we are able to gather again. So thank you so much for that. It is now my uh, pleasure to announce the 2020 Annabelle Burns Lindsay uh, 
Social Work Education Leadership Award. This award is given to Dr. Rowena G. Wilson. Dr. Rowena, Dr. Rowena Grice Wilson, a native of Washington, D.C., holds a Bachelor's of Arts degree in Sociology from West Virginia State University and a Master's in Social Work degree in Social Work, Master and Doctoral degrees in Social Work from, you know, Howard University. Currently, Dr. Wilson serves as special assistant to the provost and chair of the Institutional Review Board at Norfolk State University. She was dean of the Evelyn R. Strong School of Social Work between 2012 and 2019. Throughout her professional career, Dr. Wilson has endeavored to provide leadership and service to advance social work education at the doctoral level, competency-based social work practice on behalf of children and families, and social justice initiatives. This has been her mission and legacy after 43 years of dedicated service to the social work profession. Dr. Win Rowena uh, Grice Wilson was the first Doctor of Social Work at the Howard University School of Social Work. And so she has followed in the footsteps of our founding dean, Dr. Annabelle Burns Lindsay. So it is indeed an honor and a privilege to recognize Dr. Wilson for her wonderful work in the academic leadership world and the prof in the profession of social work. But most important, she understands that social workers are second to none, and certainly Howard prepared social workers are second to none. Thank you so much, Dr. Wilson. Dean Whitaker. Thank you, Dean Crew and Senator Griffith. We will now recognize and acknowledge graduates who are receiving special recognition for their accomplishments during the tenure in the program. We begin by recognizing the 2019-2020 Founders Fellow. The Founders Fellowship in Graduate Social Work Education in the School of Social Work is our highest academic honor. This year's fellow is Ms. Trulisa Newberry. Congratulations, True. We will now acknowledge the graduates who achieved a perfect cumulative grade point average of 4.0 in the Master of Social Work program. We'd like to recognize Ms. Jasmine Lewis and Ms. Elise Morrison. Congratulations. We now acknowledge the graduates who achieved cumulative grade point averages of more than 3.9 on a 4.0 scale in the Master of Social Work program. Those graduates are Muhammad Ali Day, David Belton, Larry Evans, Cindy Marte Frias, Shailen Kenny Ivory, Olivia Lakes, Shoregad Philpox, Mariah Rivera, Sarah Sullivan Ross, Paris Simmons, Jennifer Valdivieso, Kelly York, and Taryn Short. Congratulations. The Eva M. Stewart Field Education Exemplar Award is being presented today to two students that excelled in field education. The 2020 Eva M. Stewart Field Education Exemplar Award recipients are Monty Bush for Excellence in Direct Service Practice and the Shanda Hayward White for Excellence in CAP Practice. Congratulations. The 2018-2020 Inabel Burns Lindsay Fellowship is awarded to a full-time student during the foundation year who represents the promise of our founding dean's vision of a school of social work that is second to none. This year's scholar is Ms. Veltiandra Cotton. 
congratulations. Howard University School of Social Work is the home of the ETA ETA chapter of the Phi Alpha Honor Society, a national honor society for social work students. Dr. Altaf Hussein is the faculty sponsor and advisor for the chapter. The members of the Phi Alpha Honor Society are Muhammad Aliday, Timmy Topi Asherobi, David Belton II, Monty Bush, Felisa Concepcion, Kalina Dorns, Wakego Ekuabu, Larry Evans, Sierra Ford, Cindy, Cindy Marte Frias, Kevon Harris, Shaylin Kenny Ivory, Jasmine Lewis, Tevin McDonald, Elise Morrison, Danera Nathan, Julissa Newberry, Shoregad Philpotts, Io Port, Mariah Rivera, Sarah Sullivan Ross, Paris Simmons, Simone Solomon, Sierra Wheeler, and Kelly York. Congratulations. This year, some of our graduates had the opportunity to participate in two training projects funded by the Health Resources and Services Administration. The principal investigator for these projects was Dr. Janice Berry Edwards. The participants in the BWET program are Kenya Addison, Muhammad Alhideh, Timmy Topi Asherobi, Monty Bush, Charlene Downs, Amaris Evans, Larry Evans, Sierra Ford, Kevon Harris, Olivia Lakes, Kenise McCalston, Tevin McDonald, Joseph Perry II, Io Port, Sarah Sullivan Ross, Janae Stanfield, Jennifer Valdivieso, Kelly York, and Taryn Shore. Congratulations. Today, we also acknowledge the inaugural recipients of the Master of Social Work and Master of Divinity degrees and the inaugural recipients of the Master of Social Work and Master of Public Health degrees. The MSW MPH joint degree was supported with funding from the Health Resources and Services Administration. The principal investigators for this project were Dr. Cynthia Harris and Dr. Pamela Carter Nolan. The co-principal investigator was Dr. Sandra Edmonds Crew. We will also acknowledge our second recipient of the Master of Social Work and Master of Business Administration degrees. Please join me in acknowledging Ms. Sydney Guani on earning her MSW MBA degree, Mr. David Belton II, and Ms. Lauren Boone on earning their MSW MDiv degrees, and Mr. Joseph Perry II, Ms. Shoregad Philpotts, and Ms. Jennifer Valdivieso on earning their MSW MPH degrees. At this time, Dean Crew will also present two special awards. Thank you, Dean Whitaker. Uh, it is always uh, an honor to recognize excellence amongst our students. So I have the opportunity every year to examine our students' performance, not only in terms of academic GPA, but their contribution to leadership in the School of Social Work. And I, uh, this year, I am recognizing two students. The first student that I'm presenting the Student Leadership Award to is Ayo Porte. Congratulations, Ayo. The second Dean Distinguished Graduate Award is presented to David Belton. Thank you so much for your service to the School of Social Work, and we're so excited uh, that you are, we know that you're going to be leaders in the area of social work and the, the Dean's Distinguished Graduate Honors really allows me to say thank you on behalf of your fellow students 
as well as my faculty who really know that you will make a difference. So thank you colleagues and congratulations. Thank you, Dean Crew. We will now recognize the candidates for the degrees of Doctor of Philosophy and the Masters of Social Work. Dr. Altaf Hussein, Associate Professor and Chair of the Community Administration and Policy Practice Concentration will present the candidates. Thank you so much, Dean Whitaker. I'm gonna walk over to the podium just give me a second. Here I, here I come. Here I come. Here I come. All right, colleagues, this is what you've been waiting for. Our latest cohort, the best Howard Prepared Social Workers on Earth. And in fact, now you should get out your phones because the screen is going to be huge. You're going to see your graduates. Take the screenshots as if you're rushing to the stage. But please be careful. Social distancing is actually in effect. It gives me great pleasure to begin with our Doctor of Philosophy candidates. And I want to start with the first person. Katie Atkinson. Next. Amber Davis. Next. Gary L. Jones, Shireen Sultana, Sharde Younger. Those are our newest uh, class of uh, uh, PhD graduates and congratulations to all of them. We will now shift to announce the, the graduates for the candidates for Master of Social Work. Kenya Addison, Oluremi Akbaji, Christopher Akeke, Muhammad Al Hidai, Sara Al Rihali, Fatima Alvi. Tanisha Arrington, Temi Topi Asharobi, David Belton II, Lauren Boot, Triquanda Brock. Marissa Bryant, Monty Bush, Felisa Concepcion, Valtiandra Cotton, Melissa Davis. Kaylina Dorns, Charlene Downs, and Wakaigo Okwabu, Amaris Evans, Larry Evans. Sierra Ford, Cindy Marte Frias, Erica Garcia, Sydney Guani, Kiana Hall. Kivan Harris, Dashunda Hayward White, Sh 
Shailene King Ivory. Kristen Jackson. Saida Jones. Olivia Lakes. Jasmine Lewis. Candice McCulston. Tevin McDonald. Elise Morrison. Dinera Nathan. Ikea Nelson. Trulicia Newberry. Marquis Oglesby. Monique Perry. Joseph Perry the second. Shoraged Philpotts. Ayo Porte. Verne Rahman Smith. Chiquita Richardson. Mariah Rivera. Sarah Sullivan Ross. Fatima Samura. Paris Simmons. Jasmine Simpkins. Trachel Singleton. Simone Solomon. Janae Stanfield. Jennifer Valdivieso. Sierra Wheeler. Ivory Wortham. Terence York. And closing us out, Kelly York. Congratulations to all of the graduates and to their loved ones. Thank you so much. And turn it back over to Dean Whitaker. Thank you so much, Dr. Hussein. Congratulations to all of our graduates. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce Ms. Jazalyn Northcross, class of 2017 and president of the Howard <laughs> University School of Social Work Alumni Association for our graduates induction into HUSWA. Good afternoon. I am Jaslyn Northcross, the president of the Howard University School of Social Work Alumni Association, affectionately known as HUSWA. Today, I stand before you as a representative of over 6,000 social workers who lay claim to the title alumni of the, of the Howard University School of Social Work. This year, we also acknowledge the 50th anniversary of the class of 1970. As we pass the torch, the title and legacy of alumni to you, we pass to you both the privilege of membership in HUSWA and the responsibilities. You will be standing on the shoulders of outstanding alumni who have come before you. Although the responsibilities and challenges are many, Today, we, the members of HUSWA, pledge our support to you in your future endeavors. 
As a member of HUSWA, you agree to uphold the name, standards, values, and ethical principles of the profession of social work, the Howard University School of Social Work, and the Alumni Association. You agree to conduct yourself professionally, mentor future social workers, and support your alma mater. You also solemnly pledge your, you all, excuse me, you also solemnly pledge allegiance to your fellow and sister alumni members and promise to aid them and the association in all worthy endeavors. Thank you and welcome to HUSWA. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Northcross, and also Dr. Hussein uh, for introducing our graduates to the world. I would remind you that we are social workers, and if there are any technical glitches, please charge it to our heads and not to our hearts. We honor you and we celebrate you, and we are so delighted to be able to do this virtually today for you as we practice physical distancing. I would like to thank all of the members of the program today. Each has contributed in a special way to this celebratory event. President Frederick, Provost Wuta, Dean Richardson, Senator Melanie Griffith, Mr. Robert Taylor, Ms. Trulicia Newberry, Dr. Altaf Hussein, and Ms. Jazalyn Northcross. Thank you. I would also like to thank Dean Tracy Whitaker for organizing this event with the assistance of the Howard University ETS team led by Mr. Jonathan Pearsall and Mr. Dion Long. I would be remiss if I did not thank the members of my family in this household for converting an office to a Howard University remote office. Thank you to my son, Dwight Crew, and to my husband, Dwight Crew. Today, we have been joined by our colleagues from around the globe, including our Cape Town South African partners. They are online with us today. Thank you, colleagues from Cape Town. Also representatives from the National Association of Social Workers, pioneers like Dr. Bernice Hopper from the National Association of Social Workers, the National Association of Black Social Workers, and our agency-based educators are here today to celebrate you on this occasion. Additionally, representatives from HRSA, the Health Resources Administration, are here with us today. Our, my fellow deans, Dr. Dana Williams and uh, Dr. Yolanda Pierce, representing the Graduate School and the uh, School of Divinity are also joining us today. And the pastors across the country, across the globe, who have joined us today, we welcome you, including my pastor, Dr. Reverend Dr. Henry Davis of the First Baptist Church of Highland Park. I've appreciated your support and prayers during this time frame. Will the members of the graduating class please join me in our early Mother's Day tribute to all the mothers, grandmothers, mother figures who made this day possible. Give them a shout out today. Also, in anticipation of Father's Day, we also pay tribute to the fathers, grandfathers, father figures who came out to pay tribute to you today. I would also like to recognize uh, those who are no longer with us today. I also remember with love and respect those who have transitioned, including beloved family members, those who have been affected by the coronavirus, and beloved members of our faculty, Dr. Philip Lucas, Dr. Gladys Walton Hall, and Dr. Elizabeth Patera. Ashe. I leave with you an excerpt from a poem from Dr. Carolyn Gentle Genity titled, Social Work is Life, Life is Social Work. 
Social work is more than the sum of its parts. It's more than the eco map. It's more than strengths. It's more than responding to conflict, roles, childhood, power, and rap. It's a people, a profession, art, a skill set, a way of life. Social work is life. Life is social work. We are social work. Our stories form grounds for our relevance. The seeping pain of our clients fuels our work. We are the intermediaries between big government and grassroots. We create bridges for systemic change to occur. Social workers make change, call for change, and are the change. Social work helps co-author endings. 2020 prospective graduates, you will co-author many changes that improve the quality of life across the lifespan. From children who are quarantined in homes to older persons who are in nursing homes and assisted living today. It will be your job to co-author their existence. Graduates, you are among the chosen. And I will leave with you a final, a final, affirmation from Dean Whitaker. So I will, I don't know if you can see this, but I wanted you to know at least I have the card in hand. And the final affirmation is, I can do it in times of trouble. Remember this, who you think you are cannot handle this challenge, but who you really are can and will handle the challenge. On May 9th, President Wayne A.I. Frederick will confer your degrees and then you can officially claim the status of being a Howard prepared social worker and begin paying it forward. Now the first payment, remember, comes back to your dean. I'm looking forward to that payment and I'm celebrating with you because I have released to the world I've released to the world Howard prepared social work, social workers. Enjoy this moment, celebrate with family, and peace and joy be with you. Thank you very much to all for joining us in our first virtual uh, celebration of accomplishments. Have a great day.
Un un unmute yourselves. Unmute yourselves so we can talk. Hey. Oh my God, that was I am I was crying. Are you sure?